What's up everybody? My name is Isaac Ness. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a fly fisherman and I target a ton of different species. One of the species that I really like to target especially is musky. I do a lot of musky fishing. I try to make a point to do a big musky trip every single year and uh, just get out after it as much as I can on the local waters as well. And I put out a video a little over a year ago. Uh, fishing for musky is a pretty sweet trip I did up north with my dad and a group of some other guys that I know up there that have really been huge mentors to me in fishing for muskie. And from that, I just wanted to put out a video showing you not only the fly that I was using on that trip and the fly that I really use for pretty much all my muskie fishing, uh, but also just give you guys some tips and tricks for developing your own muskie flies. I know, especially with fly fishing for something like a muskie, there's not really patterns that are out there that are being mass produced in for somewhere like umqua that you can just go buy so it lends itself to this huge amount of creativity in the space for myself and other anglers to develop their own patterns that have really worked well for them through that i know when i first started musky fishing and i even had a ton of help from other guys it took me a really long time to figure out how to tie flies that honestly were, were worth fishing even um nonetheless actually even caught fish so I wanted to help some of the guys that are just getting into this especially um, and, and just share really what I've learned over my time of tying musky flies. So uh, the fly that I'm going to tie today that I'm going to teach you guys how to tie is called the Gandhi Dancer. So let's get into it here. All right, so we got our fly in the vise here. This is what a finished Gandhi Dancer should actually look like as you can see. It has a very tapered body. Um, it's going from definitely smaller pieces back here to more bulk, bigger in the front. We definitely do want that tapered appearance to it. Um, you know, we want some feathers in here that can move, some flash, especially some flash right up here by the head. Um, big eyes on here, I think that's a really big one. So I'm gonna get this one out of here and then we'll go ahead and start it out. The, the first thing I want to tell you before we actually get started here, uh, the hooks I like to tie on, this is a six out hook, and I've done some on four out hooks, five out hooks. I, I definitely do like to have a six out hook for the most part. I, I think that six out just has, it has a bigger gap. Typically the wire's a little heavier with it, um, and it, it just gives you some extra length to build on. So I would rather have big hooks in here rather than have small hooks and you know, try to deal with that later on. So tie six out if you can find it. They're kind of hard to find sometimes, honestly. There's a lot of times that I, it's been tricky to get it. So if you do see, you know, a good six out hook out there, buy a couple packs of them. You, you probably won't regret it if you're gonna do this a bunch. And really the, the skeleton of this fly is going to be uh, two of these six out hooks. I like to tie one is going to be upside down, so that'll be my back one I like to have upside down. My front one is going to be right side up. And then I just do an articulation shank in the middle. So all my flies I tie, I like to do um, just three lengths. The reason I like three lengths is that they move a lot more irregularly. So if you have 16 length links in a fly, it tends to stay really straight and do little movements. So it'll, it'll kind of just wave a little bit. If you have one that has three lengths or even two lengths, it joints. It does hard joint movements. It looks weird. It looks like a fish with a broken back, which is all stuff that's going to just turn a muskie on. So uh, the less joints in my mind, the better. I do typically the 40 millimeter joint. Uh, you could do you know a bigger one than that if you're tying a really big fly. And if you really do want some extra length, where I would encourage you to, to place it is taking another one of these, these joints, these lengths here, and put the link behind your last hook. So that'll give you some extra length if you really need to get to that 14 inch range or something like that if you don't have big enough feathers. The feathers I'm using today are fairly small, so if I really needed a big fly, I, I probably would have to do four lengths on it. Um, thread doesn't really matter, I don't care. It's the 140 denier color, doesn't really matter. It just so happens to be I had a tan color. So I'm gonna get some thread on here, just build a little bit of a base. Don't need much of one and just work it all the way back to the bend of the hook here. Then 
I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. Throw that in my basket. First thing we got coming up here, feathers. So we gotta make a tail on this. And you can go with a really long tail if you want. It's gonna give you a really slinky appearance. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter on it just to keep that really tapered look. I'm gonna look for feathers that are a little bit longer, a little bit straighter. That's a great one. I was eyeing this one, that's another good one. And I'm gonna do uh, maybe, I'm actually gonna do two of those feathers. And then I had this cape, and these are saddle hackles obviously. This stuff's super expensive, but I never use it for tying dry flies. So I'm just gonna use a couple of these just for that color contrast in here. And I'll take a couple of the bigger ones that I have. And I'm gonna do two of these guys along with those, those smaller ones, those lighter ones. So then, First thing, I just want to figure out how long I want that. I'm not going to go crazy long on it. I'm going to strip off some of this other fuzz on it. You can even cut that so that you've got just that little nice neat end that you can tie in. Doesn't really matter how this is sitting on your fly. Tie it in, get a couple good wraps on it. And I mean, that's not going anywhere, so doesn't really matter too much. These ones, I'm gonna do these like a little bit longer, just for a little variety, just barely a little bit longer. I'm gonna do that one on top. longer and uh, th this isn't rocket appliances guys and you're not tying size 20 dry flies either so you don't have to be too crazy particular about how these end up on the hook as long as they're on there and they're not going anywhere that's good enough you wouldn't believe the crap that I've seen some guys actually catch musky on it's unbelievable so Got those on there. I'm gonna do one more of these feathers. Little saddle hackle feather. All right. I definitely don't want those to come off, but I don't think they're going to. Next thing I like to use, I like to use a lot of lateral scale. So I have two sizes of it. I've got the really thick size and I've got the really thin size. I like to do some of this thinner size as I'm tapering the body up. And then at the head, I typically do that thicker size and I just do a couple big strands of it. So I'm gonna get a couple pieces of this. And typically I just kind of double it over, get the length I need. Run this onto the other side. All right, that'll work great. All right, so there's your tail. Tail's done, right? Looks weird at this point. You're thinking this is not gonna turn into a good musky fly. I'm gonna go a little bit up on the hook and now we're gonna do our first piece of bucktail on here. So I'm using a tan bucktail. This is a tan fly that I'm fishing. It's just gonna be kind of single tone. It'll have a little bit of tan and a little bit of red in it too, just to give it a little bit of variation, but it, it's not gonna be like truly two-toned. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do just to do this back, I'm going to, um, Tie this bucktail in just normal. You, the other way we're gonna tie it is reverse tying it. Um, but I'm gonna tie just this first one in. Pretty normal here, so just grabbing a small little clump of, of fur. And I'm gonna pick a lot of this out. So a lot of this is coming out of here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all those smaller inferior fibers, get all that under fur out of here. I don't have to go too crazy overboard with it. 
So just got a little clump of it. I'm just going to do three loose wraps on it. It's right on top. It's, it's pretty small. I haven't gone very long with it. This one's not going to matter as much because it's not going to really flare. It's mostly just going to sit back and the next one's going to start flaring and building up. Once it's on there with those three wraps, I'm just going to twist some of it kind of around the shank of the hook just to spread it around so it's, it's kind of 360 all the way around the fly. Um, and then I can cinch it down and I can just do, you know, 10 good wraps on it. Take that stuff in the front, pull it up tight. We'll go ahead and cut that off. Okay, just give us a little bit more body just to kind of bridge that gap there as we're moving up into where the, the next segment's gonna be. Now, I'm gonna go a little ways up. I mean, I'm not just gonna go right next to it. I, you can have a lot of space in between these. I could even go a little further up here just for the, the sake of proving the point. Um, so now I'm gonna grab another chunk and again, you know, don't go too crazy with this stuff. Just got like a little chunk here. And again, a lot of this is coming out, so keep that in mind. I can always throw it away. It's harder to add a little bit more to my bundle if I don't have enough. So, little bundle there. This one, I'm gonna reverse tie. So I wanna kinda line it up with how big I want it, right? Not too big. All right. So again, I've got that on there. Did three loose wraps, and I'm just going to spread this around on the hook. Get some, some good hard wraps on there. Now I'm going to get all these butts out of here. Separate all these, cut them out. And what I like to do, I take the end of a pen here and I just put it over the, the eye of the hook, push this back. Sometimes it takes a few of them just to get that, that bucktail exactly where you want it. Pull it back, wrap in front of it, and just build a little thread dam, kind of pushing that stuff back. See how it looks? Sweet, I like it. So if it looks crazy, you're in business. That's exactly how it should look. All right, now the next thing that I've started to put on here is this material called Senyo's Intruder Wrap, I think is what it's called. Um, I don't really know exactly what it is. It's pretty long fibers though, as you can see. So what I'm going to do, this one piece is going to make, it's going to tie one fly for me. And what I do is I just take a piece of cardboard and I actually sharpie this stuff against a piece of cardboard to the color that I want it to kind of match whatever I'm tying. So this one, I, I went with a brown color. It's going to be really sparse in here. I'm doing like a wrap around some of the bucktail in a few areas. You won't notice it too much, but it gives it a little bit extra body, a little bit extra movement, kind of just fluttery movement in the water. The way this is gonna work, it's gonna actually sit kind of like that over the top of this bucktail, and then it'll just flutter in the water. Um, I'm gonna cut it at a taper so that the piece that I'm wrapping on here is gonna be just barely longer than the bucktail that we actually just tied in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. And I'm just going to cut the whole thing. So you can see it's just tapered all the way. 
So just one big continuous taper. Make sure I get any scragglers in here. We are in pretty good shape, all right. We can always fix some of this stuff as we go. So, I'm gonna go ahead, go a little bit forwards, and I'm just gonna catch like just the, the very tip of this stuff. All right guys, and then this is a secret here, so make sure it's sweeping towards the back. Single wrap, that's all you need single wrap. If it looks super sparse, that's because it's supposed to be. And I'm just going to do a few to kind of seat it on there, cut that piece out, move all of it backwards, and then I'll do a couple good hard ones just to secure it in. Alright, we'll move up the hook. So, that's that's our first segment. Essentially from here, what we're gonna do is just taper this all the way up the body. We're gonna keep repeating these steps over and over all the way up the body. You can add flash in here, and you can also add in uh, a little bit of feather as well as we go. So uh, I'll do one more segment before I'm gonna actually add flash and feather. So you can see we're, we're kind of building up, we're building that body. Let's add a couple feathers in here. Um, it looks really light. Let's do a couple of, of these guys on here. A couple of these kind of red ones from this cape. What I do now as I'm moving up the body is I will do like two feathers at a time. And I do usually try to put these kind of opposite of each other. They don't have to be by any means. They can be totally random on here. But I do kind of try to keep it somewhat regular as I, I move up the fly. Those are on there. Let's do a tiny bit of flash on here. And I'm just gonna do like single strand, cut it into quarters because we don't want to go really longer than the rest of our fibers on here. Tie it in on one side, sweep it over, tie it in on the other side. All right, that is in there. You can see how we're just building up. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep tapering that. So really from here guys, it, I mean you just continue exactly what you're doing, what you've done so far. up to our next section right we have an articulation shank here sometimes just bend them a little bit more open so I can actually get it on the hook put it in there and all of this so far can go up or down it's all even so now moving forwards I'm gonna tie this so that, that hook rides up so that when I'm fishing I have one up, one down. That's personal preferencing. I really don't think honestly that it probably matters for, for most people and what they're doing. Really, you'd probably be fine with both down. You'd probably be fine with both up. Um, but just do it however you wanna do it. I like one up, one down. I, I feel like maybe it gives me a little bit better of a chance at, at actually hooking a fish. Maybe that's more in my mind than anything, but 
That's how I feel, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Okay, so now to connect my next segment to this, I need to do something a little bit different. Um, what I like to use for this is, uh, it, it's like Beetalon wire. I just get the cheap stuff from the craft store. Make sure it's like the thickest stuff that they carry though. I don't know what like the strand and all that different stuff is, but it's it looks about the same as the 30 pound wire that you would get from like American Fishing Tackle or, or whatever those brands are that sell the bite wire. You can use bite wire. I'm just cheap and this stuff's so, it's like $2 for a spool that's gonna last you for 40 musky flies. So I'm gonna put this stuff through. I like to do two strands. So I've never had an issue with one strand. I've tied a lot of them with one strand. I've seen a lot of issues with people using mono or Dacron. Um, I did have a friend who got bit off with Dacron lost the back half of his fly he will remain nameless um but it it sucked i mean he missed a good size muskie it would have been the best muskie he's ever caught because he used dacron instead of wire for that middle you need it to be tooth proof because since i have a million teeth they're going to be this is going to be in its mouth and there's a bunch of razor sharp teeth so i'm going to go through the eyelet with both of these and then here's the trick to this. I'm gonna take all four strands and I put a metal bead over it. So through all four strands, just like this, just on there. I'm gonna do two of those, so. What this is doing is it's gonna allow us to kind of when we tie this to our next fly, it's gonna be like this, and we can keep it exactly where we want so it's not gonna to be too big of a loop that could then end up getting hooked as you're casting it, but you can still position it as far back as you want from your next fly. Let's go ahead and get our other hook on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna search one. I do a little bit further back just to kind of give me an idea of where I need to be starting that head at. Just gonna get some thread on here, build a little base. Okay, so I went all the way back to the bend of the hook here. Now what I'm gonna do, I, I do wanna make sure that this stuff rides exactly the way I want. So I want that hook riding up and I want it sitting straight on top of this fly. So I'm gonna tie it in there with just a couple loose wraps. I can pull it kind of back into position where I want it and I'm gonna do it pretty tight because I don't want it moving around on me. Always adjust this stuff a little bit. I don't want to gain snagged. I don't want it moving around on me. So that is about good for me. 
just a nice tight little loop there. And now I am going to tie all of this in really tight all the way as far as I can. Really up this hook. I'm going to go all the way back down. Just do the step right. I mean, you don't want this stuff coming undone. All right, so I went all the way up, all the way back down, all the way back up, and that was a crap ton of wraps, right? I mean, this stuff for sure is like, uh, I'll rip my vise out before I'll pull that out. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold it back over itself, and I'm gonna tie all of these in. So it's reversed on there as well. And uh, that's not going anywhere, guys. I promise you that these hooks will break and bend and anything else will happen. You will break your fly line before you're going to separate these two segments now. All right, that's on there. We got a nice built up body and it, we're getting some taper in it. It's definitely tapering. I think we need to like really start going big though. So I probably that last one I should have gone even a little bigger. All right, so now we're gonna move the flies finish right. We've got, that is the base of a Gandy Dancer and I did all the fixings on it. So you do not have to do this predator wrap. You do not have to do this much flash. Like I said, you can go chicken feathers. You can go with the bucktail and you know, some flash if you want it. And I mean, that's it. That's like really what this body is. I just like kind of the way this extra stuff looks on here. It makes it look a lot more kind of three dimensional and makes it a lot more interesting in my personal eyes, which I has nothing to do with the fish. The fish do not care. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna get my fish skull put on here so that it's gonna look something like this, just to give it something to finish off. And I'm gonna do a nice old big eye on there. Um, I will show you that. So I'm gonna use, this is the UV clear uh, the thick and 
have a lot of light coming in here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do to actually get this on here, I go ahead and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the top and the bottom of the mask here. I don't think this part is really important. It's just to get a little bit in there um, so it has something to, to stick onto. I'll show you to see just a little bit that I did front and back. Make sure it doesn't run into the, the eye here. All right, position it where I want. And this is one of the places where now I have the ability to go through here, make sure that my all my materials are coming out right, that everything is kind of sitting right where I want it. You want it nice and straight on the front of the eye. And I'm just gonna hit it with the UV. And now I'm just gonna try to fill kind of this entire area in the head. So I just filled that entire cavity with the UV. We are fully UV'd. Now, so when it's important, make sure anything that I do now, it's going to be real permanent. And you probably will need to leave this under a UV light for a while. You're going to actually even see probably some air pockets forming it. Like I can already see that there's one forming right here in the front of this. So. I mean, let it cure for a long time. Cure, 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 cure. If you don't, it actually, it'll run out. You'll think it's cured all the way and you'll take it off and then it's going to actually start to run out of the, uh, of the mask and it's gonna get in all the other material and it's gonna make it cure in this weird way where it's kind of clumped together instead of separated. So definitely, if you have a sunny day, throw it outside in the sun for a couple hours. That'll really do it. Otherwise, just leave it underneath one of these lights for several hours as well. It's in there. Next step, we want to put some eyeballs on this. I'll show you what I like to do. A lot of times I use, where do I have one? Most of the time, I use these living eyes from, I think it's fish skull as well. I just ran out of them, but I do really like these. I don't think it matters super a ton. So I'm going to put some of these little googly eyes on it. They're kind of funny. They kind of rattle. It's kind of hilarious. So, um, first thing I'm going to do with that, I'm just going to super glue onto this, just a tiny dab. So just a little bit on that little eye hole there. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set that googly eye in it and I'm just gonna hold it down. Just for a few seconds. Remember the super glue bonds it, uh, it especially bonds one surface to another. So that's really important here because if I did the UV, the UV kind of like just hardens into a casing. It doesn't do as great of a job of actually bonding one surface to another. So it, it is important in this to actually bond these surfaces and then I'm gonna encapsulate it in the UV resin. I'll put both of these on here. Single drop. Set that on, I'm just gonna hold them now. Makes a nice fat head on here. Doesn't matter, probably not. Um, hold it for a couple seconds. Just make sure that it bonds really tight. And then we'll go ahead and actually encapsulate it. So now once those are on there, well, as I say that one of them literally pulls off, that's absurd. 
on it. So they're both stuck on there. Pretty good. Shouldn't come off. I like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just fill all the way around here. And you can kind of let it like sit down into all the cracks and crevices, make a nice bubble over it. And then I'll go ahead and harden it. Will these come off? Good chance. Um, th there is honestly, because these are so much more raised up than those living eyes, there is a chance that the eye actually comes off on this. I'm certain that I, in that case, if it did, I could clean out that little space and I could put a living eye in it, one of those flatter ones that I showed you before, and it would probably be totally fine. So I'm not super worried about it. Um, those living eyes, I've had pike, I mean, all over them. I've had scratch marks from teeth and caught, you know, 20 plus pike on a fly. Scratch marks all over teeth, and I've never had one of them come off. These doll eyes, there's a hollow cavity inside of it, which I could see their teeth puncturing and then that might rip it off if their teeth gets caught in that opening. So there is a chance, um, but again, if it does happen, I think it's pretty fixable. So I'm not gonna really worry about it. Uh, and you know what, especially where I've been fishing a lot recently, it's only musky, there's no pike. So if I catch a musky on it and I lose an eye, the least of my concerns is gonna be whether I lost an eye or not. That one's on there, let's get this other one in. And that is essentially it, guys. So at that point, your your Gandy Dancer is tied. A completed Gandy Dancer. That one is probably probably close to about 12 inches. It's got some nice movement. Moves nice side to side, up and down. Um, it's super light, and really, it's pretty hollow. So these cast really well. They do not hold much material. I usually honestly fish in nine weight when I'm fishing for musky, and I have no problem casting this stuff 60 feet plus um, and putting it in pretty accurate, swimming it back super accurate and doing it all day um, with a nine weight. And that's not testament to my casting abilities. I mean, they really are just a super lightweight fly. As far as these things go, I mean, I don't think you can get more lightweight than what these guys are. So I hope this helps you out. I hope that you guys enjoyed the Gandy Dancer and that this puts a bunch of musky in the boat. I know that this was a big impediment to me when I first started was figuring out how big of flies to use, how to build that size and that bulk without making it just a wet sock. Uh, and then also, you know, how to actually get the movement that I wanted. So fish these things, check them out tweak them if you need to, make this work for your purposes, and if you do catch musky on a Gandy Dancer, you gotta send me a video or a, a photo or just something. You know, comment on the video and tell me what you caught on it, a pike, anything like that. I love to hear that. So if I help one person put a musky in the boat, that'll be mission complete for me. But thank you guys so much for watching. I, I really appreciate the continued support. I'm gonna try to put out a lot more videos like this. I know this is a really long time video. Um, you know, you probably skip through a ton of it, uh, which is to be expected here. But I, I do think that it's, it, the internet is saturated with a lot of guys just whipping up patterns. And what I wanna do on top of that is really kind of introduce you to the mindset of why I'm doing all the different things that I'm doing when I'm tying one of these guys so that it, it's not just how you know how to tie this one fly, it's that, hey, this is the mindset behind what it takes to tie a good musky fly, period. And you can take that and add to it and make it your own and make your own patterns on top of that that work really well for you. Um, but thank you guys again, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna try to keep content flowing out regularly this year. So if there's something you guys want to see, if you guys want to know how to tie something uh, or you know what flies I used on something, what knots I'm using, anything about techniques where I'm fishing, please put it in the comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see and I will be happy to put out videos of it.
But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching.